you do? I'll then four. I'll then four. Uh huh. Okay. You're, you're, you're drifting out of the picture. You should come a little closer. There we go. Okay. Um, so we're talking about two kinds of generative and two kinds of data that are at the, at the end of unit nine at some point. The, the generatives are called subjective generative and objective generative. Okay. And I think they're, they're, they're confusing and there isn't a whole lot um, um, uh, but in this particular place you can, in which you can apply this understanding. But let's understand the grammatical categories at least. The, the meaning of the terms are that in a subjective genitive, what's underlying the, uh, the, the genitive is a sentence in which the genitive noun would be the subject. And in the objective genitive, um, the, under, the noun in the genitive would be the object. Okay, um, so so let's give you a, an example that may not be helpful in itself. <laughs> okay, so the, the standard example of this is in English. It's ambiguous. If you say the love of a father, okay, there are two ways of understanding that. It can be um, the father loves someone, okay, is the, as the underlying mm -hmm. sentence, okay, in which case the noun father is the subject of the sentence. Mm -hmm. Father, so why don't you write that down? Mm -hmm. The father loves X. <laughs> that's a subjective genitive. Okay, so that's the father's love for somebody, mm -hmm. right? The love of the father, right? Father loves X. Um, if it's love of the father, it's somebody else loves the father. So it's X loves the father as the underlying genitive. Okay? That's an objective genitive. Objective genitive because the father is in the which is the noun and the genitive. Yeah, I think you want to make the arrow to the father. Yeah. Objective genitive. The, the father is the object of the underlying mm -hmm. sentence. Okay? Mm -hmm. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So now, that's that's all that you, the book really tells you. We're going to have an application of this. Um, uh, and in Greek, there's going to be a way in which you can make this distinction formally that you can't always in English and you can't always in Greek. Okay, you have to look at the context to decide what's meant. Okay, but there are ways in which you can distinguish in some cases. All right, let's move on to the two kinds of dative that the book calls up, the book talks about, the dative of manner and, and the dative of respect. Okay, um, now these terms don't go back to ancient Greeks. Okay, they go back to 19th century grammarians. Okay, um, and um, um, I personally have trouble with them. Okay, what we've learned so far is that you have in indirect object datives and instrumental datives. Okay, an instrumental dative is the one that tells you you put in the dative case the thing with which you do something. Okay, um, so is this fundamentally different um, when you say in this way I wrote a book? Okay, um, what the book calls that is the dative of manner. But it gives you the, the way in which you do something, okay? Because it gives you the way in which you do something. Well, it's really just the instrumental data. It's the, the, is there a big difference between the way in which you do something and the tool with which you do something? It's just a, just an extension of, uh, of an association with it, okay? So Belisi put this in a, in a beautiful way before we started talking about this. You know, they said just yeah, well, that... Yeah. Even if you don't know any of these terms and you see it in a sentence, you're yeah. going to translate it properly. Exactly. <laughs> and the same thing goes with, with the data of respect, although it's a weird sort of mm -hmm. construction. The data of respect is a, or a data with adjectives, okay? So when you say want to say somebody is beautiful in body, okay, or beautiful in soul, you put soul or body in the, in the data of case, okay? Um, we're going to learn another another construction that we're going to have to distinguish between this, but but you say kalos te psuche, okay, uh, for beautiful in soul. Mm -hmm. uh, in some place, so space enough. 
Probably knobs. Well, no, the loss, the adjective. Uh -huh. Maybe a phrase, not a sentence, but that's all you need here. The last day. That's right. Okay. So that means beautiful in silver. I think we only just said that's over the air. It's all right. <laughs> so that's a, a. I think again to take Belisi's rule. If you had to guess what that meant, you you figure it out. Right. Mm -hmm. Beautiful in silver. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm okay with sticking with that. I'm going to ask you which kind of a dative it is. If you can translate it, you can. That's the that's the main thing. So go with your gut feeling about what works. Okay, that's the way it works. I think in language, but in reality, the native speakers don't have four or six different kinds of dative. They have one. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's not how it works. All right.